test test one two three for anyone just coming to my channel and see my obnoxiously long hair let it be known that i don't usually have my hair this long as with most youtubers during quarantine it has grown out significantly and i've not cut it in like three months i usually don't wear it this long so don't worry i understand that the mullet is a bit excessive it's not really my look so to speak all right, it's tier list time again. What's if you do? This is Burfy Two. Welcome back to Dead by Daylight tier lists. Another installment in the uh, YouTube series that probably shouldn't be a series where I make tier lists on killers. How many have I made of these? Like f f four or five? This would make it the sixth one. Anyway, the reason we're doing another tier list today is because Pyramid Head came out. And it's finally time to see where he ranks on the tier list because he's been out for about a week, I'm pretty sure. And uh, that's right around the time where we can finally start placing this guy uh, in the pecking order of all the killers. And which also, it also gives me another chance to re-rank these killers uh, because it's been a while since the last one I did, which was almost four months ago. So I'm very excited to tackle this again. Okay, I'm recording this little snippet in post because uh, I feel like I needed to say this because I, I want to make sure I get the right vibe with this video. Also, this is usually the standard that I wear my hair because I know a lot of people come to my channel for these stylish videos. This is the proper hairstyle that I, I usually have. My Anyway, more to the point. Um, this is a 30-minute video. I haven't edited it fully yet, and I'm recording it. I'm editing it right now. But... um. This is more of the type of video that you kind of play in the background, um, listen to what I'm saying, and the tier list kind of gets formed, and you can kind of forge your opinions while you watch. It's not really typically engaging, but it is really intellectual. I like the 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 facts and the well, I wouldn't say facts, but the the morally placed opinions in the video. I think it's a really educational watch, so if you want to learn more about these killers or form better opinions of your own or even share your opinions with me, I implore you, watch the whole video and then give me your opinions because I would love, I would love to talk about these killers with you guys. It's great. So yeah, enjoy. So we have another tier list here made by some lovely person on tierlistmaker.com. Here we go. And we're going to work. You know, in the chronological order that they're placed just for ease of access. So, Clown, it, I'm going to close. I had my other two list open. I'm closing it now. Clown, easy C. Mm, I'm going to delete B+. Plus. I don't like it when I have a bunch of tiers to work with. This seems pretty good. So, C. This means that this killer does... Okay, C. This means that this killer is very bad. They don't have a very powerful power. Uh, they don't have any map mobility, anything like that. Clown fits this criteria perfectly. His bottles, you only get four of them. The reload time is super long. You have no map travel whatsoever. Um, you get loud audio cues for when you vault the window so the killer doesn't, or the, rather the survivor, doesn't need to be looking at you at all to know that you vaulted a window, which is often takes a lot of the fun out of mind games. Granted, there is a lot of potential with this killer. He can still be fun, much like every killer on this list, but uh, statistically, he can be pretty pretty weak. He is pretty weak, which is why Clown is right here. And I'm pretty sure, I don't want to say anything yet, but I'm pretty sure nothing's going to change from the last tier list, and he's going to be second worst next to, uh, next to Bubba. But anyway, we're not up to Bubba yet. Deathslinger. I don't remember where I put him last time. I haven't seen a bunch of Deathslingers. B, I think. Because um, he's just a worse Huntress. Well, I, I wouldn't make it so black and white as to say that he's a worse Huntress. He is a lot different from Huntress in some very specific regards, but the things that he's different on aren't really that important. And it kind of just becomes a sort of like, he's Huntress, but... It's, the stuff you do takes way longer. Whereas with Huntress, you can just throw a hatchet and then injure them. Whereas with Deathslinger, you need to hit them, 
you need to ADS, hit them, reel them in, hit them, and then chase again. Whereas with Huntress, ready hatchet, throw it, ready hatchet, throw it, they're down. So, I don't know. I He definitely has um, a lot of power, and he can be very good. I'm not saying that he's bad. B tier is mainly that the killer has a lot of pluses, but not a lot of things to bump him up super high. Or have weaknesses that uh, bring them lower to, than where they could be placed. So, I don't know. Deathslinger is a bit of a, a middle ground when it comes to killers in this game. I think that's pretty pretty accurate. <sighs> Demogorgon. I've been so divisive when it comes to this killer and where to place him. Oof. I'm going to narrow it down to B and A. I know that he ha is good, but is he really that good? I'm going to have to say no. I'm going to put him above Deathslinger, so he's got that going for him. I've always struggled with this killer, man. Now, I, I should probably clarify how I'm ranking this. I'm ranking this mainly uh, the community's response at large to these killers with uh, a heavy... Uh, vote toward my own experiences with the killer, but I'm not gonna be like I'm not gonna rank nurse in D tier because I can't get any kills with her because that's obviously not how it is. Nurse has always been an S tier, so I am just saying that this killer I struggle with a lot. He's the only killer I lose single handedly with every single game. I just don't get him. So I, I, I watch gameplay of, you know, other streamers and YouTubers who stream and do YouTube videos on Dead by Daylight. I see them do well, and I understand that, and I know that Shred is a good power, and I know that the portals are a good secondary power. When I play him, it just doesn't click. It, it just does not work. So I might be biased in this place, but, but he's still in B tier and higher than Deathslinger, no, no, uh, no doubt, so... I don't know. I'm, I've said my piece on this killer. Doctor. Oh, Doctor. Hmm. Doctor. I put him in B tier after his rework. And he used to be, like, down here in this camp for a long time before he got his rework. I'm now going to say that he is way better than I let on before, and that reworked Doctor is definitely a very good killer. A static Blast is a great power. I seriously love it to death. And I love Shock Therapy being a secondary power instead of like different stances. It makes playing him a lot more fluid and fun where you can just kind of keep a steady pace without having to swap to different stances and waste time doing that where you can just kind of chase around a pallet, hold M2, the shock comes out very clean and you can get hits off. It feels right. Doctor finally feels right. And he has great power counterplay, great tracking. He hits all the boxes for me. I think this killer is way better than people let on. Seriously. Like, seriously. Doctor is way good now. I might be underranking him still. I won't say that because these S and A tier killers have always been, like, definitive in their rankings. But I do think he's really strong. So, yeah. Freddy, A tier. Probably going to be third. Uh, Freddy is my main. I main Freddy. I love Freddy to death. He's so good. Um, what is there to say about this killer that I haven't before? I'll try to recap what I usually say in these chainless videos. Dream snares or dream pallets always go with dream snares. Dream snares actually have great pallet stopping potential. You can place as many as you want at whatever speed you want. You can just run around the map while you're patrolling gens. Just throw some snares down. Um, and because of micro sleep and hitting survivors, people will constantly be getting into the dream snare. And you'll always be benefiting from having snares down. The snares are super strong. This killer just is so good. And the Jelleport on top of it makes him have extreme mobility. <sighs> That's great. Great killer. I might have underplayed him in, in comparison to what I've said in past two lists, but I've said my piece on him. <laughs> Ghostface. I don't know. With Ghostface, I've always 
always said that people overrate this killer seriously seriously overrate him especially especially true talent i have a beef with him from back when he said that ghostface was third best killer i get that it hits his favorite it's his, it's his main i don't even know if it's his main but he does like this killer a lot he says it's his baby so ghostface is definitely very good killer not up here barely here I don't even know right here because it's you can still fairly avoid getting marked or even if you're just looking to see where, where uh, a ghost face is coming from this i mean stealth killers in this game are often hit or miss i think ghost faces definitely has a, one of the stronger stealth abilities um with his shroud I, it, pulling him out is just far too easy and far too frequent that I can I could ever see him putting up here he just has too many things that aren't great about him like he's for the most part just an m1 killer with a pretty powerful uh stealth ability he doesn't have an instant oh this he does have an instant now but I guess he does have an instant down but he has no map traveling or anything like that he just feels pretty basic and he doesn't really have any of the the enhancements that Myers has or any of the other uh, M1 killers like Billy. So, I don't know. I've always been pretty indifferent to this killer. I've always said he's good, no doubt, but not great. Uh, definitely not amazing. So, yeah. Hag, definitely A tier. I always get people in my comments on these tier videos saying that Hag is not A tier. She belongs down here. And you're just, I'm, you're simply wrong. You've, ne I, I guarantee, none of you have ever gone against a good hag or seen her full potential, because oftentimes hags are just complete brainlets, don't know how to play, don't know how to trap, don't know how to do anything. Hag is a monster when you know those little like finesses, those little minute things that bump her up mainly phantasm traps being a great sense of map presence and map pressure and map travel and also pallet stopping and pallet counterplay and also hook con contesting the the traps are so flexible not to the same level as freddy's traps whereas freddy's traps are just serve as like tracking and uh, you don't really have to stop and place them so they feel better in that regard but Hag traps definitely have utility that is universal, which is one of the great things about Hag. I get that one. I'm gonna <laughs> stop preaching about Hag because uh, all you have to do is just see how good she is. I can't really put it into words because if I go down a list of pros, I don't know. People can just comment up their own list of cons. So, guarantee you, watch some good Hag gameplay. It'll change your mind. Okay, Billy. But you blow hack. The thing with Billy is it's far too easy to get behind a line of sight or force an M1 if you know what you're doing as a survivor. Um with Billy, if you if you never let him get close to you, if you're always smart and you know what you're doing with um when it comes to like windows and pallets and whatnot. And looping in general you never want to let a billy get too close because that's when he's at his most deadly when you have nowhere to go no way to escape the chainsaw he, he is great in that regard however his map travel is his superior ability in in my mind he has the best map travel in the game aside from like oni and his blood fury but that's on a like a charge meter so billy can use his chainsaw at will and get virtually anywhere at lightning fast speeds as well as having an insta down on top of it the killer is synonymous he is amazing however it's if you he has these great abilities but if you make it so a billy can't really get close enough to use it he kind of just becomes an m1 killer without the uh the help of perks so uh that's why when i get billy's me when i'm playing survivor 
they usually don't have much of a fun time because I'm just never letting them get too close, always keeping my distance, always having a window or an escape route because I know if I get trapped, it'll be the enemy. So you just, I feel like Billy's just kind of get the short end of the stick nowadays, but he still has good powers, no doubt. Then we have Huntress. Ooh. It's going to have to go below Billy. But Huntress is so strong. So strong. I implore all of you to go watch Scott Jun, my absolute hero. <sighs> he is so good with Huntress. He recently picked up Oni, uh, as well as some other killers. He just kind of plays. And your teen Huntress is not his main anymore, but if you go back to like 2018 or whatever, when he was maining Huntress and playing her every game, you'll see some of the great utilization you get with her uh, unique and... Uh, powerful hatchets uh, because they are just simply pros the hatchets injure and down survivors the skill cap is for you to decide you practice this killer you'll become a killing machine you don't you might have a rough time however the skill cap is there and it's what bumps this killer up immensely she is 110 she does have a 40 meter hum she does have to reload her hatchets but however the, the strength of the hatchets and that skill cap is what really make this killer just solidify into the A tier. Baba, get in your tier. Legion, I, I'm i going to say something bold here, that Legion is seriously underrated. Now, I'm not going to say he's a B or an A tier. He does still belong at C, but most people lump him in with like the bad killers which i don't think is fair to legion legion is he has freedom and i think what is so good about legion is how feral frenzy doesn't really have a particular way of being used now that can definitely be something of a downside because uh, you have a power that somewhat lacks purpose but i think your freedom with how you choose to approach Feral Frenzy as a power is what makes this killer feel strangely unique every single time you play them. Whereas you can just run around the map and Feral Frenzy hit people and you'll get people injured a lot, which is a huge plus. You can prevent people from healing pretty pretty powerfully uh, with the, with the uh, Deep Wound. Uh, you can also use it as mobility. And uh, you can you still have 115 movement speed, so you can pressure pallets and get around the map and be a force to be reckoned with all on top of that. That's trapper speed, mind you. So, yeah, I do think Legion is, because he's small, uh, he has a lot more more of a, a power with 115 movement speed. Because most 115 killers are super big. You can see over loops. Legion's small. Uh, and with Freddy and Ghostface, who are higher than him because they have better powers. But they're also small and also have 115. And that's a huge plus for them. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Legion is definitely not as bad as everyone lets on. Still not the greatest thing ever. Myers. I'm going to put him below all these killers. Nice little middle of the road for Myers. He's a pretty balanced killer. He came into the game relatively early, back when there weren't all these funky powers. Basically, you have three tiers of evil within. You go up to tier two. You never go back to tier one. Uh, you go up to tier three. You have a one shot, and you that's on a time limit. You go back down to tier two, which is pretty much an enhanced uh, killer anyway. So the reason I'm putting him up below Ghostface is because Ghostface has more of an active uh, stealth and a more uh, universal one shot whereas with Myers uh the stock has more power because it's linked between survivors and you can initiate a snowball like that which is super good for him and it's why he's still a really great killer um however his stealth overall is is very limited to having like monitor and abuse or scratch mirror otherwise he's m mainly a brute force killer uh, which is still strong but it's why I put him below these guys. Uh, nurse, get in your tier. Oni, I'm going to put you... Here. Oh, man, that is really... 
That is really interesting. Oni above Billy. I think the thing that separates Oni from Billy is your more it's a it's a more friendly version of the chainsaw where it f it, it just feels better it feels better to have a lunge to have distance to be able to strafe and get around the map granted it's on a charge time however blood orbs and whatnot always has that sense of presence whenever a survivor is injured they're always sweating wondering oh god i'm leaving a bunch of blood orbs i better heal it puts the pressure on the survivors to heal because they don't want to give you your power. However, when they're healthy, you can hit them and still get the power back as fast as possible. And because survivors are constantly healing, they're not doing gens, it's Oni's design blows my mind at how intricate he is and still extremely strong. And I think because he's so complex and it's just a bunch of little things that culminate in an explosive killer that has a lot of presence and a lot of strength when you go back to something like billy which is more basic you have a chainsaw you decide how you use it it feels more it, it feels less guided and and a bit more confusing i suppose i i mean they're they're right next to each other so who's to say who's better or worse for me, it'll always my money will always be on Oni because I, he just feels better. It works better. Um, yeah, I don't know. Pig. C tier, unfortunately. Piggy. So, Pig. I think Pig does get a lot of flack. Some of it justified. Meaning, when I say flack, I mean not hate but rather um just a, a in general a, a kind of attitude that that killer is just meh which is fair i want to kind of play devil's advocate for a uh, for pig for a moment i think reverse barrel traps are very uh, they could be so much more it sucks that endgame collapse happened it sucks that there, there just isn't more to that ambush it it works i don't know pig just has abilities that don't they don't mesh with the current form of dead by daylight they don't have purpose ambush is super slow takes way too long to charge the survivors can always see it coming it only really works when survivors are off on a gen super far away and they don't know that you're coming like at the start or end of a game or something to that effect and reverse barrel traps have just been nerfed and nerfed and nerfed with every update. <sighs> if I don't know, there's just not a lot to pig anymore. Where everything that was good about her has been kind of patched out. She can still be good, of course. Much with all of these killers, they have viability. Every killer is viable so long as you're good enough to master them. Now, something like Bubba, where um, you have a power that's not really in your favor. Um, it, it'll be harder, but knowing the flaw will help ign ignore um, the dangers of being like caught off guard by those flaws. If you know them and work around them, you can often sur surprise survivors who think that this killer is kind of bad. Whereas um, something like Freddy... Uh, the skill is built in to the killer, where it feels better. Anyway. Plague. I'm getting, I'm getting weak, man. Okay, Plague. Man, this killer is boring. Do I even need to talk about Plague? Does anyone really care? Um, because survivors can choose to not cleanse, this killer gets super boring and not a lot of love. She still has a pretty strong power, but it's just, I don't know. I am just so dissatisfied with this killer. I don't even feel the nerve to talk about her. I'm going to move on. Plague is meh. If anyone wants to hear my opinion further on that, leave a comment or something. 
I'd be happy to discuss it. Spirit, A tier. Second best killer. I've always just been in disbelief that Spirit... People defend that Spirit isn't so good. Spirit is so good. <laughs> Um, I'm getting, I, I'll, as you can tell, how long have I been recording? Like 30 minutes or something like that? 24 minutes. Spirit. So, with this killer, you hold M2 and you win. That's basically, that's basically what happens with this killer. Um, phase walking is, is ridiculously strong. Whereas with, when, uh, when it comes to chase, between a killer and a survivor, survivors are always in response to what the killer is doing. Same way, the killer is in response to what the survivor is doing. And I get what they're trying to go with with Spirit, is like you kind of handicap um, both side senses, whereas the survivors can't see what the Spirit is doing, and the Spirit can't necessarily see what the survivors are doing. However, uh, Spirit can hear and see scratch mark. Hear, you know footsteps and breathing and whatnot and see scratch marks to the point where you don't even need your sight anymore you just hold m2 find the survivor they don't know where you are at all so you can just find them and then hit them vice versa and it's not on a ridiculously long cooldown so you can just run around and do it again even even then you still have passive phasing so if you're running around a tile you kind of blink in and out the survivor can't necessarily necessarily tell what it is you're doing like if you're doubling back or if you're continuing in a direction it can confuse the survivor pretty heavily not to mention you know there's a whole other primary power which is ridiculously strong what is with this killer i'm not saying that she's overpowered none of these killers are really overpowered because it becomes a matter of like player skill sure the skill cap with spirit is there and you can you know get destroyed by someone who's got like a thousand hours on spirit because you can do poorly with a killer, I don't think there will ever necessarily be some sort of meta when it comes to, like, this killer needs to be nerfed. Whereas, if a, if a player puts in the practice to get that good at a killer, why, why are you taking that away? That seems pretty, pretty cool. Okay. Trapper. Trapper, trapper, trapper. So this killer has a lot of cons. A lot, a lot of cons. I'm still going to put him here. Yeah. So with trapper, it's the basic concept that you trap. Survivors have to loop things. So if you trap loops, you are guaranteed downs. It becomes, at that rate, it becomes a sort of like, oh, is the survivor smart enough to loop this way? Or are survivors going to be here to step in this trap? Or are they going to be in some other corner of the map doing a generator? Are they even going to come back to this area because the generator's been completed here? They have no need to go here. When it, it comes down to the wire, Trapper is all about encapsulating a specific area, trapping it to death, downing someone there, hooking them there, and having people sandbag bum rush into traps, into safes, and then the whole team eventually bleeds out at the end. It becomes a sort of reactionary gut instinct where it, it, it's very rewarding to know what a survivor will walk into and what they won't and what to do and whether a survivor will see this trap. If I can put a trap here, if I have enough time, are they going to complete a gen? It feels very strategic. It, and it gets kind of frustrating sometimes, I understand that, but it, it's also very rewarding when you finally get it, when you're finally like, ah, oh, that that snowball was so perfect that's when trapper really shines and these killers are ranked on their best trapper undoubtedly has a lot of down downsides and cons but like i said if you know a killer's flaws and you truly embrace them and work around them you can survive just surprise survivors a lot of the time and trapper has a super strong suit in terms of unpredictability and paranoia on the survivor side if you know what you're doing and it all comes down to that skill is what is really looming over your head when you're ranking trapper and i do think he places right here wraith oh my god people say wraith is not this low 
I fail to see what they're seeing. Wraith sucks. Guys, I do not even feel motivated to talk about this killer. Same thing with Plague. Whereas with Plague was more boredom, this is straight up bad, just abysmal, terrible. He can be good. It's just really not fun to play this killer, man. You don't feel like you can do anything. It's so terrible. The uncloak. You need to do like a three second uncloak where you're slowed. And even if you're hugging a survivor while you're cloaked, you have to uncloak and watch them slowly get away from you. And then use the pit pitiful default windstorm to catch up to them only to find that they've gotten to a pallet or a jungle gym or a series of windows or the ironworks window, which did get changed. So it's there's I mean, the stealth is his only plus, but he's got nothing else. He only, a lot of these killers are super dependent on add-ons. Billy is one of them. Ghostface, somewhat. Demogorgon, maybe. And Wraith is king amongst them. This guy really, really needs add-ons. And I hate when a killer requires add-ons. Because I don't like to use add-ons. I consider the base power the power. I don't like to use add-ons because I'm... I like to save them because that's just the way I am. So, Wraith bad, what can I say? And now we get to Pyramid Head. Where will this guy rank? I'm very, very, very curious. I only played one game of him, but I've seen people play him. I don't want to set anything in stone. I might be prisoner of the moment or somewhat biased to this. Mm, I really wish I could put him in A tier. I'm trying to find a reason right now. He's undoubtedly strong. Yeah, I'm going to put him in A tier. I'll put him down here, though, because I don't think he's better than Huntress simply because um, Pyramid Head has like a, a set range, whereas with Huntress you get more freedom because there is no range with the hatchet. Um, however, Pyramid Head has kind of the same thing going on. I do like the trenches. I do like Tormented. I do like the cages. The, um... I don't know what the power is, but you know the one that injures people. That's really his strong suit. I love the way that they, those flow seamlessly together. Digging trenches with M2 and then being able to press M1 and go and hit someone. There's a lot of uh, counterplay loops now, which is great. Tormented can have uses. However, the primary power will always be, you know the thingy so for now i don't really have a lot to say about him but i'm gonna put him in a for now um and yeah that'll about wrap up this video let me know if you guys have any uh opinions on where i've placed these killers i'm certain i'll get some of them i'm happy to discuss it and come to a consensus because uh i do like talking about these things uh dead by daylight is a game that i'm very fond of i have about four thousand hours in this game I love talking about these killers and seeing what other people think, trying to convince people, and people trying to convince me. It's great. I like having discussions about this game. Discussions in general are really fun for me. So, uh, yeah. Bye, guys.